Well, it's that time of year again, buddy. Time to start shopping for Christmas. And may I say, you look very fetching in your antler situation here. Nice choice. I like it. Is a particular reindeer your favorite? Crusher. There's no such reindeer, buddy. All right, minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor and my shopping episode non-traditional reindeer notwithstanding this was a very very popular episode last year and i've been looking forward to doing it again this year to give you all some great ideas now that we're kicking off the shopping season for christmas 2019 i know i know it's a little early to be getting too far into the christmas mood well maybe not for some of you but as you know you got to get a jump on shopping. If you wait till the end, you don't have a whole lot of choices. Last minute shopping, some people enjoy it. It bums me out. I like to be done early. I like to be able to get what I want. And I've got a lot of great ideas for the artist in the family, or maybe that's you. Now I know with this episode, I get a lot of viewers who are not necessarily subscribers to my channel and they're not necessarily watercolorists. So I try to make this a general gift giving guide for artists everywhere of all types and all media. I think it's fun, usually when it comes to watercolor, and this is a watercolor channel for those of you who don't know. When it comes to watercolor, I like to pick my own supplies. I usually buy them, my brush choices, my paint choices, my paper choices. Now maybe you put those on your list if you're a watercolor artist because you can't afford it or there's a special paper and that's fine. But I'm not gonna be going through what I would call standard picks or commonplace watercolor supplies. I like to pick items that are unusual, that are very nice in a gift giving sense, and maybe something that an artist just totally hadn't thought of. Or if they had thought of it or seen it, they wouldn't buy it for themselves necessarily. It's sort of an add-on luxury item, an add-on novelty item, an item they may be able to use in their art studio that may just not have top priority, but once they see it and get it as a gift, it's like, oh, I love that. And I have all price points. So as early as it may be, Let's get into that gift giving spirit and look at a few things. All right, so let's start out in the studio. Um, and this is related to watercolor. These are palettes. And while I know a palette is a standard staple for artists and they usually pick themselves, uh, one of the things I can recommend, uh, especially if it's a new painter, they haven't been painting long and they're just like using plastic palettes. An additional palette that you can bring upside of an existing palette is always a great idea. And a luxury version of that is ceramic. This is a ceramic palette. It's about $14. And oh, by the way, all prices are going to be U.S. and all links are going to be U.S. prices. I'm sorry, those of you overseas. So I apologize if you can't find this. I do hope you'll consider all of these categories as idea starters that might get you thinking of what a great gift would be. So anyway, um, back to the porcelain or ceramic palettes. These are great add-on luxury items. Uh, most times when an artist is starting or has collected limited amount of supplies, particularly in watercolor, plastic is the most common palette type. There are also metal boxes. Ceramic is a nice luxury item, as I mentioned. And what's great about them is they're heavy. They're great for sitting on a studio table, but they clean off. They don't stain. They're whiter usually than uh, most plastic. They clean up back to pure white. And there's a number of different types out there. But let's put a little more of a gift giving spin on it. And if you're gonna give a porcelain palette, why not give something really unusual? Here's one sort of in the shape of a flower. A lot of interesting uh, different mixture areas. I think this is a really interesting novelty ceramic palette for an artist. They will probably remember you if nothing else, right? There are artists out there that use decorative uh, deviled egg trays, you know, the little dished out egg trays to paint out of just because they want to paint out of something interesting, unique, and decorative. So this is an idea. Again, both of these are about the same price, about $14 each. So it's not a tremendously expensive gift. All right, here's what I hope is a good idea starter for you for a gift. Uh, there are any number of great pencil cases out there, and believe me, I've got a ton of them. From zippered pouches to, you know, pencil holders of all sorts. These are two of the more interesting ones I've found. Again, I think they make great gifts because they are very nice looking, very uh, inexpensive. This one's called the Home Cube, and 
This is probably my favorite. It will hold quite a lot and very flexibly. It has uh, elastic straps here for pens. A pouch you can put erasers and stuff in. Another pouch up here. And a deeper divider space here where you can put a number of pencils or markers or any of that sort of thing. And this divider comes out. Velcro allows you to keep that in or keep it out. Again, a lot of artists probably have something like this, but may not have seen one like this or as unusual as this. This is another one. Um, this is a little harder to find, especially on Amazon. I actually got this on Jet Pens. It's called Fix In by Nakabayashi. It's a smaller case. If you need something smaller than this, I really love this. This uh, is one of my favorite, probably my favorite small pencil case. This goes in a lot of plein air watercolor kits with me. It doesn't have any elastic bands, but you can put quite a lot in here. If you have pens with clips, even brushes, this makes a nice little compact unit. This, These pleats here expand, so you can actually stuff it pretty full. So see what's available. I can't give you a link for this one. I'm finding it hard to locate now, but I hope you look into this category as an idea starter for a gift. Maybe this one uh, is current. This is about $10.50, so very reasonable, and it comes in navy blue, black, and green also. Interesting, appreciated gifts, I think. Not expensive, and might give you other ideas yet. All right, so here is another studio tool that I think is very useful. In watercolor, anyway, uh, it is always recommended that you never leave your brushes point down in the water. And when you're done using them, you let them dry flat or vertically. Now, vertically, it's kind of hard to do unless you have something to hold them up. There's all kinds of DIY projects out there for that. Uh, but there is a product that I think would be very useful for studio artists, especially water media artists. This is the uh, Masterson Art Products Stay New Brush Holder. Goes together easily. Has these little rubbery holders here. So when you're finished uh, washing a brush out and you're ready to let it dry, it just goes right in the holder. And a nice little drip tray beneath. A product not many artists would think of or maybe even know exists. But for you water media artists out there, make sure you're not leaving your brushes in the water especially and once you're done washing them out make sure they dry flat or vertically with with a holder similar to this i love these little rubbery holders and it's got some that will hold some rather large items here it's rather large type brushes very cut, soft kind of a silicone like rubber masterson art products ink stay new brush holder and on Amazon, this was right at about $18 US. All right, so a lot of you are probably familiar with Artbin. Artbin makes these uh, supply storage cases uh, for pencils, brushes, markers, any sort of art supplies. They even make the bigger tackle boxes. Uh, that's not new. That's uh, They've been around for a long time. I, I've always considered Artbin products, they're pretty high quality, but I've always considered them fairly pricey. There are usually generic alternatives out there, but this I thought was interesting. The Art Bin Sketchboard. This is a, a, an art case, but it's designed to be a sketchbook holder or sketchboard. It's a nice clip here, really uh, pretty ruggedly made. Opens up and you have yet another clip inside in case you want to open it and use it open. But a nice pouch uh, enclosure here. It will hold like two or three books or sketchbooks, pads, a number of pencil, brush, uh, loops here, elastic loops, a zip up pouch, put things in, put more books over here or pads. This is not something you see commonly and probably not something that a lot of artists would have thought of. If you know someone who likes to sketch, who could use a good uh, sketch board, I thought this was an interesting option. This is about $32 on Amazon. However, at Hobby Lobby in the US, it was about $30, I think. 
and I used a 40% off coupon. And just in general as an idea starter, just check out some of other the other Art Bin products. They do have some that are pretty unique. They have a lot of nice tote folios and unique cases that you can't get in a, in a less expensive generic form. If you're, if you're like me, this is another one of those luxury items that you don't usually buy for yourself. You usually go with something cheap and easy to get by with in terms of storage. But as a gift, I think it's unique and very useful. The overall size is about 11 and a half by 16. And it'll fit most 9 by 12 media pads or sketchbooks. So up next is the Paul Rubens watercolor block. So this is watercolor related. Now, the Paul Rubens is a Chinese company, obviously named though after the uh, European painter. Oops, I tore the box. Well, I've been familiar with them from their paints. I was sent a set of Paul Rubens paints. Uh, I have so many paints and, and there were a lot of reviews out there for Paul Rubens paints, so I really didn't want to do a review. They weren't bad paints. They were what I would call affordable artist quality, down on the low end of artist quality paints. A little better than most student quality paints. But I saw these watercolor blocks and I thought uh, these are in a nice presentation case. Would make a great gift. And it's 100% cotton paper. So that's always great. Now this is hot press. This is their largest block. About seven and three quarters roughly by 10 and three quarters. Just under eight by 11 I guess. Again very unusual to see a watercolor block presented like this. It also comes in a pink cover which was kind of unusual. This is sort of set up like a sketchbook. So when you look at it, you might first think it's a sketchbook. It's got the uh, elastic enclosure, but it's not a book. It's a block. Hot press paper, uh, as far as I know, does not come in cold press paper. 100% cotton, as I mentioned, 20 pages. I'd be impressed with that as a gift. A nice way to receive a watercolor block. And does it paint well? Well, let's find out. I have seen a couple reviews. So before I bought this, I did know that it was reviewed, at least by a couple of people, favorably. And I'll probably do a more in-depth review at some point. Hot press is a little bit different to paint on, just slightly, than uh, cold press. Because it's smooth, granulation actually shows more on watercolor, on hot press paper. On cold press paper, granulation is more evenly distributed because of the texture but it, it's easier to see on hot press. But you do get nice crisp details with hot press. Yeah, I think this paper is fine, especially for a sketch block that you might take out into the field or a portable block. Sizing seems to be good. So there you go, the Paul Rubens. And you might look at their other products too, the Paul Rubens paint, if you're needing uh, to buy some artist quality paint for maybe a beginner or somebody who has got uh, cheap paints and you just want to upgrade them a little bit. It, their uh, paints, as I mentioned, come in sort of in the bottom end, uh, but yeah, they do, I think, qualify as artist quality paints. And most people who've used them said they're really quite good. This Paul Rubens watercolor block will run you about $20 on Amazon, this, this size. The roughly 8 by 11 size. And they just do a great job of presenting their product which always makes for a nice gift. All right, as long as we're talking about paper, uh, let's look at the Render Sketchbook. This has been on the market for two or three years at least, but uh, it kind of is getting a lot of rave reviews. It's getting some negative ones too, but I'll explain that in a minute. I've never tried it. I want to try it. But if you're looking for an unusual book, sketchbook, to give to someone as a gift, I might recommend this. Render is a Crescent product the maker of illustration and map boards. And of course, I love, if I'm giving a sketchbook as a gift, I love to give hardbound sketchbooks because they're just nicer and more of the splurge factor when it comes to a sketchbook. So this is a nice hardbound, casebound version. They also have spiral and softbound versions of this. Now the claim to fame behind a render sketchbook is that it's bleed through proof supposed to be usable for all media. Now, being a watercolor channel, I hasten to say right off the bat, it is not, I repeat, it is not watercolor paper. And it is not, again, I repeat, it is not cotton. So if you're looking for a watercolor book, this is probably not it. However, I imagine um, on sketch work, 
you could use media, wet media, fairly dryly. What reviews I did see that used heavy wet media said that it buckles a little too much. It's fairly stiff, heavy paper. So I think it would allow you to combine things like watercolor markers, definitely alcohol markers. I see uh, a lot of good reviews on that. And there's absolutely no show through on the back. Now let me just uh, demonstrate for a moment. So I'll get some very fairly dark ones. I'm going to go into the back of this book because I do plan on using this. This is a Tombow watercolor marker. So uh, watercolor by uh, using a watercolor marker is a fairly dry way to use watercolor. So we're going to put that down. And I'm going to get the Tombow watercolor blender. Blend it a bit. Get in some uses there you might encounter. Let's pull out a Copic, fairly dark alcohol marker, grays. Alright, pull out a Sharpie. Everybody knows a Sharpie will bleed. Get it nice and dark there. Now if I use this for watercolor, here's probably how I would do it. Just lightly toning a sketch or a drawing, maybe with a water brush. Let me pull out my uh, Holbein gouache. Might be a nice surface for gouache. Again, the, the reviews that I have seen recommend you don't use heavy amounts of water. So if you're using the uh, water media lightly, Probably be okay. So let me try a liner. You know, if the Sharpie's okay, a liner is probably going to be okay. Well, let's just do it anyway. And of course, pencil. This is an HB. Look, just fine for a pencil. I want to try one more thing. A watercolor pencil. And colored pencil would work great on here, it looks like. It's a nice surface. Again, if I were using watercolor and activating watercolor pencil, I would use maybe something like a water brush and not get a lot of water in there. That looks like that would work fine. I am not getting any buckling with that amount of water, these lights amount of water. Let's turn the page for the grand unveiling. Wow! Not a single bleed through of anything. So that's the claim to fame to this book. So if you love, if you love great sketchbooks, nice case-bound sketchbooks especially, this makes a nice gift. Bit of an unusual gift if you've never seen something like this. I love gifts that are also sort of conversation pieces and gives an artist something new to try something they never considered, something different. I love gifts like that. All right, the render sketchbook, uh, this nice case-bound version is gonna run you about $20 US on Amazon. All right, now this is probably the most expensive item I'm gonna show today, and sometimes it's just great to give a really high-quality brand name, something that people will know is quality. And I think Faber-Castell fits into that category. Pretty much every artist draws. Faber-Castell has a lot of really nice drawing sets like this. They're, they're hard pastels, they're pastel pencils, they're watercolor pencils, they're colored pencil, polychromos colored pencils. And the graphite pencils are, are no different. This is a really nice graphite set. If you know somebody who loves to draw, they love graphite, which I do. I've, I've spent a lot of time this year sort of reintroducing myself to different forms of graphite. Love graphite. You can't really do much better than this. And this is sort of a premier set. It's the 26 piece pit graphite set. Man, <laughs> it just makes me want to sit down and start drawing right now. So first of all, you get a set, a full set of their regular graphite drawing pencils, HB up to 8B, I think, including 2H on the hard end. You get three of their graphite aquarell water-soluble graphite pencils. You want to add a little water tone to that and a brush for activating that graphite. Woodless pencils, pit woodless pencils. That's a 9B, 6B, 
3B. Three large graphite woodless graphite pencils. Just basically huge chunks of graphite. These don't even have a cover to them. We're doing some nice large gestural stuff. 2B, 6B, and 9B. And uh, three of the jumbo 9,000 set in a jumbo size. 2B, 4B, it looks like 8B. Kneaded eraser, blending stump, soft eraser, pencil sharpener, which handles uh, the big and the small. Eraser pencil, so sort of a pink pearl, more abrasive eraser. And a sanding block. Pretty much everything that a graphite artist might want in a set. Again, about 56 bucks US on Amazon. If you have the means to give a nice gift, want to spend that kind of money on somebody who will really appreciate it, this is a great set. You could combine it with the render book for that matter. I've been painting and drawing for 40 years and I would be excited to get this set. Lovely. All right, well, I did want to throw uh, at least one watercolor brush at you. Um, but it's only because I thought it's a fairly unusual brush and makes for a nice gift. I mean, obviously any brush makes for a nice gift if it's something that your gift receiver really wants. But this would be something less likely to uh, be purchased by an artist uh, as it's more of a luxury or specialty item. These are travel brushes. And this is one of my favorites, Princeton Neptune. I use Princeton Neptune quite frequently. For instance, the Neptune is a fully synthetic brush, but it's very soft. It's meant to imitate squirrel. Holds a lot of water and a very nice travel brush. Travel brushes, as I mentioned, are just not something that most artists think of unless they're um, plein air or they go out a lot sketching. But whether you go out plein air and sketch outdoors on location or not, travel brushes are great for just uh, folding up compact and going in a compact storage kit. Now these will run about 22 up to 46, depending on the size. Something like this would be great to pair with that Paul Rubens watercolor paper. If you have a budget like that for gift giving. I love these brushes, but I even like more the fact that they have these collapsible travel types. All right, books. Let's talk about books. Now, Claudia Nice is uh, an author I discovered a, a few years ago, and she specializes in pen and ink and watercolor, what is often referred to as line and wash. But she's got some great books. I mean, they're just, they're well-written, well-detailed. Uh, this is the one I bought a few years ago, and it particularly applies to landscape. She has a very detailed process, but the two books I want to show you today are specifically focused on texture, creating textures. She has a real easy read style. A lot of illustrations and mainly uh, just little blurbs that you can read. And it's not just on pen and ink. Well, she does cover a lot of that. It's, it's also a lot of tips and whatnot on color, tips and techniques on painting in general, masking. I mean, uh, it's just a loaded book. But what I really wanted to show you was uh, this one, which I only more recently bought. And this is available in soft cover or hard cover. This is a more all-inclusive book. It, it includes some of the landscape, a lot of overlap with that last book, but it talks about a lot of other subjects as well. And I think she probably goes into better detail in this book, especially on things like color, materials, number of pen and ink techniques, and texture creating techniques. These are just great. I mean, it's an excellent book to go through and just uh, practice all of these ideas. And this will help you even if you only use a little bit of ink, mostly watercolor. So she's got landscape in here too, but a lot of other things as well. A really good technique book, especially if you're in love with pen and ink and watercolor combined. This soft cover will run you about $18 on Amazon US, and I think about $40 if you get the hardcover version. Extremely nice book. Extremely well written book. Good one for a watercolor library. I was recently sent this book by Christy Rice. If that name is familiar to you. It may be because you remember the painterly days. Watercolor coloring books. Or the cutting garden uh, watercolor coloring books. She originated all of those. And if you're a colorist, like to color, if you're a watercolor hobbyist and are just looking for a fun activity book, this is probably for you. It's just a beautiful hardcover book, gilded edges, 
It's called the Art for Joy's Sake Journal. Art for Joy's Sake is, is sort of a mantra of hers that I think is really neat. Not so much a journal as it is an activity book, I would say. It's got some project pages uh, with prompts to kind of help you uh, think through some things you might draw and paint. It's got projects of her own that she's done. And then she tells how she did it, what she used, and the story behind the art. Very uh, motivational writing. And then she's got coloring pages with examples of how she colored them. Just a, a really fun kind of a book. A lot of tips in here for enjoying your art. It's, I think, a, a sort of a low-pressure book to just get out and play around with things like watercolor. And the book is just uh, beautiful with a ribbon bookmark. These kind of books make wonderful gifts. The Art for Joy's Sake Journal. And I think this is about $22, $22.50, something like that on Amazon. Now I want to end with some inspiration. Um, I love uh, annuals that compile work, the best of work in a particular category. If you love pencil, colored pencil, um, Strokes of Genius is just an amazing book. This is the latest one. They come out with this every year. Strokes of Genius 10 is this year's. And if you want to get inspired to draw with pencil, this is the book to do it. Very, very inspiring examples. Some very realistic work, very detailed work. There's a lot of that in Strokes for Genius, I think. A lot of detailed work. It's just very conducive to pencil. Or I should say, pencil is just very conducive to realism. And most artists love to draw, so one of the great things about Strokes of Genius, especially on Amazon, is that you can get a lot of the previous annuals going back through the years available from uh, used booksellers, and a lot of them are cheap. I mean, I've picked up several of the past ones, sometimes paying less than $10 for them. And last but not least, and I think this is a repeat idea from last year, and that is Splash. Although this is this year's Splash number 20. Splash is the best of watercolor. Another annual and another great book for inspiration. So yeah, this is a watercolor gift. Great for a watercolorist. I think one of the things I love most about Splash is that it sort of busts through conventions about how you should paint with watercolor. There's just too much of that out there, you know. The major trend and sort of preference you see preached most, I think, about watercolor is that it should be loose and washy because that's its nature. And I love that this book really busts that. It's got a lot of that, which I, I love some of that, but it also has a lot of work in here that's not, that kind of breaks the mold. Like this, for instance. If you want to look at a lot of really great watercolor work and just sort of ponder all the styles and ways in which it can be done, uh, this book is for you. So both Splash 20 and Strokes of Genius 10 at the making of this video. These are the current ones. Both of these will cost you about 35 US on Amazon. Well, that's it, folks. That's my holiday shopping guide for artists. I hope you've got some ideas. Maybe it made you think of something completely different you hadn't thought of. And of course, maybe you thought of some great ideas that you can mention to the people you know giving you gifts. Hey, it's all good, right? I hope you all have a great holidays coming up and uh, let's get to shopping. Thanks everyone. Appreciate you watching. Thank you so much patrons for sponsoring my channel and we will see everybody in the next video. Bye bye.